An eerie wind was howling outside the walls of the dark and clammy cloister. Whatever autumn leaves were left on the trees were rustling violently in the wind. A sleepless monk laid on his bed, his teeth chattering due to the cold in his room and due to the fear in his heart. His eyes darted around the room at the sound of every noise. He was afraid that tonight would be the night in which his soul would be dragged down to hell. Prayer was not an option, for God was the one he was afraid of. To him, God was an angry and vengeful judge. He could see him swinging down the gavel with rage. He could hear the verdict coming from the judge's lips, guilty as charged. The name of that frightened friar was Martin Luther. Perhaps some of you are aware of Luther's time in the Augustinian monastery. He did confession multiple times a day in order to be absolved. He worked himself to the point of exhaustion and even beat his own body in the hope of making up for his many sins. But no matter how hard he tried, he couldn't escape the condemnation of his own guilty conscience. It was tormenting him. There's a word to describe what Luther was going through. It's called Anfektung. Anfektung is a German word which means angst in a profoundly religious sense. Anfektung is a word which describes utter dread and despair over one's sins and guilt. The one who's experiencing Anfektung has an overwhelming fear of God's judgment and their condemnation. And Luther was right to fear such condemnation. For St. Paul tells us that all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Luther's focus was directed towards himself, which meant all he could see was his own sins and his own unrighteousness. Ironically, his outward acts of piety were making things worse. The harder and harder, the more and more he worked, the more and more he tried to please God the more scared and the more concerned and the more uncertain he became over his eternal fate. See, Luther's focus wasn't on Jesus, but rather it was directed inwardly towards himself. This misguided focus towards oneself is one of Satan's oldest tricks in the book. And what's even better for him is when his victim is led to utter despair and dread like Luther was. This focus on oneself, this misguided focus, doesn't always lead to despair. Sometimes it's quite the opposite. Luther, or excuse me, Satan led Luther to believe that he was irredeemable. Satan also misleads people to believe their sins aren't that big of a deal. Does that sound more like us? Do we view our sins as mere mistakes? Harmless hiccups which God will just brush off. Far from on factum, we don't seem to take our sins very seriously at all. And if our sins aren't that big of a deal to us, then neither is our need for the Savior. And as Christmas approaches, the Savior who came becomes less important than the gift giving and the preparation for family gatherings and whatever else might be going on this holiday season. Whether this misguided focus leads us to hopelessness over our sins or to insensitivity over our sins, the result is the same. It's self-centered. The focus isn't on Christ. And since the focus isn't on Christ, then the more we see how much we deserve that verdict of guilty as charged. However, this is exactly why he came. Jesus came. To justify us. While studying the book of Romans in the monastery, Luther came to experience what he later described as his, as his breakthrough moment. The righteous shall live by faith. This righteousness comes through faith in Jesus Christ to all who believe. All are justified freely by his grace through the redemption which came by Christ Jesus. Rather than an angry judge declaring him guilty, Luther heard a different verdict, and he saw a different sight. 
he heard, not guilty. And his eyes were directed towards a cross. When our eyes are directed away from ourselves and towards Jesus, we see someone whose focus was never on himself, but always on his mission of saving us. Paul tells us in Romans 5, verse 19, for just as through the disobedience of the one man, the many were made sinners, so also through the obedience of the one man, the many will be made righteous. Adam's curse was undone by Christ's perfect obedience. Our unrighteousness replaced by Christ's perfect righteousness. And this was a righteousness from God, apart from the law, completely outside of ourselves. When our eyes are directed away from ourselves and towards Jesus, we see someone who came to justify us. And this justification came at no price to us. Paul tells us all are justified freely by his grace. The price was paid in full by Jesus, the perfect substitute on Calvary. When our eyes are directed away from ourselves and towards Jesus, we see someone who completely changes our outlook on all things. A self-centered focus which shows our condemnation, replaced by a Christ-centered focus which shows our justification. Christmas, a holiday not centered on materialism, commercialism, gifts, food, parties, or any of that, but rather a holiday focused on the word who became flesh and who dwelt among us. Fear and dread over our own unrighteousness replaced by joy over Christ's perfect righteousness. And knowing the seriousness of our sins, we appreciate the significance of Christmas all the more. Jesus came to justify us. Luther's fear and dread were replaced by joy and gladness. He stopped focusing on himself and instead directed his eyes towards Jesus. In Christ, he was freely and completely justified. Likewise, during this Advent season, our eyes are directed to the one who came as a lowly infant, wrapped in swaddling clothes, and lying in a manger. Our eyes are directed to the one who lived the perfect life on our behalf and who died the death that we should have died. Our eyes are directed to the one who rose from the dead and who promises to come back to judge the living and the dead in his second and far more glorious coming. We already know what the righteous judge will tell us on that day. Not guilty. I came to justify you. Amen.